about this, this class by looking at the very first statement in the Analects of Confucius. A lot of, uh, a lot of people who study Buddhism, Westerners that study Buddhism don't know, or even uh, study yoga, don't know the, well, particularly Buddhism, don't know the connection between um, Confucianism and Buddhism. But this first sentence in the, in the Analects of Confucius says a lot, and I think we got to pay, pay close attention to it. It says, the master said, so the master is referring to Confucius. The master said, having studied to then repeatedly apply what you have learned, is this not a source of pleasure? Is this not a source of pleasure to apply, to repeatedly apply what you have learned? So when, when Confucius is talking about learning, he's not just talking about book learning, but studying ourselves. And that's what that's what meditation is about, studying the self. That's what yoga is about. We do these yoga practices in order to study more closely ourselves, and then to apply what we what we're learning about ourselves. So, for example, let's take a moment just to look at our breathing. Maybe check out the the flow of your breath. You could look at your breath at your abdomen or at your nose. And this is a form of study, right? Which, where does it feel right to you to check out your breath at your nose or at your abdomen? Or maybe neither. Maybe becoming aware of your physical body, any sensations that are present. So this is studying the self and learning, learning how does the mind respond? How does your mind in particular respond to, to this? The second sentence reads, to have friends come from distant quarters, is this not a source of enjoyment? Right? To have friends come from distant quarters, isn't this not a source of enjoyment? All right, we gather here from various corners of of the, the county or the state to be together. But just even in general, anytime friends coming from far away, that's a source of enjoyment. We take pleasure in it. It's so simple, right? It doesn't have to be religious or spiritual. We just get together. That's a source of an enjoy of enjoyment. And then the third sentence, this is the, this is a real challenge, I think, for many of us, including myself. It says, to go unacknowledged by others without harboring frustration. Is this not the mark of an exemplary person? Right? To go unacknowledged by others without harboring frustration. Is this not a, the mark of an exemplary person? Wow, how do we do that? That's, that can be a challenging one for a lot of us because we all want to be acknowledged by, by people. And yet sometimes we're not, even though we feel like we deserve it. But how do we live without that frustration accompanying us? All right, so some things to, th to think about. Let's see if we can lengthen our back up a little bit and tuck our chin down just ever so slightly, lengthening the back of our neck, shoulders coming down a little bit, softening the area just above the eyebrows, pressing the sternum forward just slightly, very little bit. Notice any changes in your breathing. What is it you're, that you're learning here about yourself? Keeping in mind that your best teacher is not something or someone outside of yourself, Just noticing this body. Keeping the practice simple, just noticing your body. Maybe noticing your breathing. All 
All right, let's begin to rock a little bit forward and backward. We're just going to kind of slowly start to move a little bit. And I just want, want to caution everyone to really pay attention to your own body as you're doing these movements. It's so important because our body really carries within it. It's our teacher. Then if you want to rock a little bit side to side. And then making some circles, just circling our body around. And really see if we can drop underneath, drop underneath the mind and into the body, drop underneath the thoughts, the waves of thoughts that are happening on the surface of the mind and draw closer to sensations in our body, what we're feeling there in our body. You can circle the opposite way when you're ready. And then we're coming back to center, let's engage the vocal cords, the, the lungs a little bit, throat, by chanting the sound, the syllable, om. This sends a really peaceful reverberation through the, throughout the, the rib cage. And, you know, especially in this time of, of COVID, protecting our lungs, you know, bringing a, a, a peaceful sense to the lungs is so important keeping our lungs healthy or getting our lungs up to, up to good health. So let's together take a deep breath in. On the exhale, oh. Another deep inhale, bring it up a little higher notch. Oh. Another deep inhale, last one, bring it back down. a few moments just to stay with that peaceful vibration. All right, wonderful. Let's make our way onto our hands and knees for cat cow. I'm going to turn off this the screen here so that you can see me a little bit easier while we do this. But make your way to a cat cow. So coming on to all fours. And you may want to have um, some blocks or bricks for this movement or for, for this class. Something close by to help uh, as a prop. I'm just kind of rounding our tailbone down and lifting our tailbone up. Exhaling to round down, inhaling to lift up. Exhaling to round the tailbone down and inhaling it back up. And continue at your own pace. Follow your breath. Let your breath guide you. Breathing in and breathing out. Notice how your back is feeling, your back muscles. 
joints in your vertebrae, the vertebrae, the spaces between the vertebrae can also help to guide you in this movement. So listen, pay, paying attention to, to your back, your physical back. Dropping awareness from the incessant thought patterns that go on in our minds that are not real useful for us often and into just awareness of our bodies. Okay, ready? Let's, let's transition now to downward dog. When you're ready, when you're ready, let's transition to downward dog. That's lifting our knees up, drawing our heels down. Maybe shaking out the head a little bit, walking the heels in place, or lifting and lowering your heels if you'd like. But make this making this your own practice. This is really your own practice, and do what you feel is right for you at this time. Even if it's different from what I'm doing, make it into your own practice. You can straighten your knees if you like, or bend your knees. How does this feel? What are you learning about your own body here as you're in this yoga form? Maybe shaking your head a little bit. And study the breath. Breathing in and breathing out. And let's walk the feet when you're ready. Walk the feet to the hands. Maybe just hanging out here. For a few for a few breaths, five or six breaths, maybe taking some deeper breaths in. You could bend your knees if you like, just kind of folding your body forward over your legs. Your your legs may even touch your abdomen. See if you can make it easy for yourself. And then when you're ready, begin to roll your body upwards in your own time at your own pace. I'm just hanging my head. My head is just kind of hanging down here. My arms are just like dead weights on my shoulders. Just as I straighten up my back, you can feel the pulling of the muscles in my back. And then making our way, approaching mountain pose. Approaching mountain pose. This is mountain pose is, is where we're standing with our hands at our side. It may seem really simple because we do a, we spend a lot of time standing, but I would like to ask you to consider approaching the the yoga asana mountain po mountain pose approaching it means that we don't actually enter into it completely we check it out it's like we're standing at the entrance way and figuring it out right how does it feel what how do we how much weight do we put over our heels over our over uh, over the balls of our feet how much weight do we put over those parts of our feet. How far do we turn our shoulders outwards in this, right? There's not a right answer to this. There's not a right answer. It's just a matter for us to explore. How much do we lengthen up the back of our neck? Right? These are things we can explore as we approach mountain pose. How about our, the center of our body? Can we notice that? Subtle little changes there at, at our core, maybe drawing the navel in a little bit. All right, we're just checking it out, bringing a sense of curiosity, a sense of learning, what Confucius calls the love of learning, All right? We're studying the self. Okay, let's come to the front of our mat. And if you'd like to join me for this couple of a few sun salutations, drawing the palms together in front of the 
in front of the sternum and then releasing the arms up overhead. Just kind of holding the arms up overhead like that for a few seconds. And then just reaching up. How does that feel to have your arms up over your head, just holding them up like that, lengthening them up out of the shoulders, coming back to your body. Okay, and then releasing the arms down about halfway, about shoulder height and folding forward from the hips. Allowing the head to drop forward and the hands to come down. Here's a good spot where if you have blocks or something, or thick books, I'm using bricks, you can put them on either side of your feet for some height for your hands to rest on. Yeah, so feel free to check that out if you need them. If not, just you don't need them. And then let's step the left foot back. Stepping the left foot back and lower the left knee down. Let's take a moment, see what you notice here around the tops of your legs. See if you can soften the muscles around the tops of your legs. Maybe bringing a sense of, of easy, uh, easy feeling to the, around the tops of your legs. Maybe your, at, your, your core, core muscle sense of ease there at the core. And notice any other places in your body where you feel tension, dis-ease, discomfort, any place, maybe softening those areas. All right, let's slide or step the right foot back to meet the left. And then when you're ready, lift your knees up, downward dog. And straightening your elbows, just kind of feel that in your back. This upside down V, upside down V shape we're making with our body. Drawing our heels down towards the mat and maybe straightening our knees a little bit. And see how that feels. Just taking it into consideration your whole body. And then shifting your weight a little bit forward, lowering your knees down. Bending your elbows and go ahead and tucking your elbows in slowly and you're at your own pace, lowering all the way down to the, to the floor. Lowering your chin down, pointing your toes. Take a few moments to rest here on the floor. Okay, when you're ready, let's lift the head, neck, and shoulders up, putting no, no energy at all into your hands or arms, just using your back muscles to lift up your head, to lift your shoulders up a little bit, maybe squeezing, squeezing your glutes a little bit, bringing your feet together, and breathe into your ribs. Okay, let's put some energy into our, our hands, into our arms, push up, bend the knees, curl the toes under the feet, lift the knees up, turning to that upside down V. Right, noticing your body. When you're ready, let's step the left foot forward or slide the left foot forward. Make sure your toes are protruding out beyond your knee. Right, that just helps to protect your knee a little bit. And again, here on this side, now we're lower, lowering down our right knee and just making some space, creating some space around the tops of our legs, softening the muscles there. Softening the muscles around the core. And lifting the knee up, the back knee, your back knee. Let's step the right foot forward. You're welcome to bend your knees here if you want or have them straight. You can try both ways. It's totally up to you. You can do it either way, bent knees or straight knees. And just kind of hang in there. Maybe taking in a little bit more breath here. And 
and then rolling up when you're ready in your own time. Just letting your head and arms hang. Rolling up to standing in your own time, no hurry. Just being present in your body. Elevating arms up overhead. Gonna interlace your fingers, lengthen them up. Maybe turn your palms up this time. And then drawing the palms together, lowering them down right in front of the ribs. Maybe take a moment to look at your hands, see them there. Notice your hands. Enjoy your hands. Our hands do so much for us every day. We, we just don't acknowledge them. Do they get frustrated when you don't acknowledge your hand? They could be considered exemplary. The fact that our hands do things for us all the time, and yet we rarely acknowledge how much, how grateful we are to have hands. All right, so maybe take a moment to notice your hands, your fingers, all the work they do for us. What would we do if we didn't have fingers and palms? It's an opportunity to develop gratitude for these simple things. How wonderful. All right, let's do a number two, reaching the arms up overhead and folding forward as you're ready. This time, bending the knees and stepping your right foot back. You could have your right knee on the floor or off the floor here. And if you'd like, plant, plant your right hand down and lift your left arm straight up towards the ceiling for a little twist. Okay, and then lowering your left hand down stepping your left foot back. So really pushing into your hands. Shoulders are strong here. So we wanna put some strength into our shoulders as we bring the left foot back and draw the heels down, lifting the knees up. Maybe straightening the knees. You can shake out your head a little bit. Maybe take in a little bit more breath, breathing out a little bit longer. And shifting forward to uh, actually let's lower the knees down and right, then bend the elbows then shift forward, straightening your knees and lowering all the way down. Uncurling the toes and lifting up the head, the neck and the shoulders. If you can release your hands from the floor, lift them off the floor. So we're engaging our back muscles. We're engaging our back muscles here. Hold, see if you can keep them up. All right, and then when you're ready, lower the hands back down, squeeze your elbows behind your back or into your sides, wherever they are, squeeze them closer to you, your shoulder blades coming a little closer and then pressing up, curl the toes, Lift the knees, engage shoulders, engage your shoulders as you lift your knees up. Heels coming down. Your, your heels don't need to be all the way down touching the floor, but you could explore moving your feet closer to your hands and see if that makes any difference. And you could explore moving your feet further away and see if that makes a distance, moving your feet further away from your hands. All right, so we can use this yoga form as an opportunity to study how our body responds to the space that we create between our hands and feet, and then apply, the, apply what we're learning by making a decision as to where to place our feet. All right, what works for your body? Okay, let's step the right foot forward. 
lowering the left knee. You can have the left knee on the floor or off the floor. And feel free at this time to raise the right hand up, straight up towards the ceiling. Take a few breaths here. And when you're ready, feel free to circle that hand back down to the front of your mat, stepping your left foot forward. And let's lift the head up halfway here, bringing our hands to our shins or our knees, lifting our head up halfway, extending out through the neck. You might feel some openness in the back of your legs. As you lift your head up halfway, you might feel some openness in the back of your legs. And then just kind of folding back forward. If you'd like, you can unbuckle your knees and begin to roll up. Let your head and ha arms hang here as you roll back up to stand. Continue to elevate your arms over your heads, inter, interlacing your hands, maybe turning the palms up. And then drawing the palms together in front of the heart. Take a moment to notice your hands. How often do they go unacknowledged? by us. And yet they don't complain. They do what we want. For the most part, they do whatever we want. Pretty amazing. Okay, let's step our right foot back. If you'd like to join me here, you're welcome to. And step your right foot back, bending your front knee, your left knee. Explore the, diff the distance between your feet, how much space you wanna have there between your two feet and how much to bend that front, that front knee. Right, we're looking for open space in our bodies and then interlacing our hands behind our head, pressing our head into our hands. And you might notice some muscles engaging in your upper back and neck here when you press your head into your hands, you might feel some engagement in the muscles in your upper back. These muscles are often too relaxed and they become extended, over, overly extended from sitting in chairs often or too much or hunching forward. And so this is a way to strengthen those muscles. Okay, let's, let's keep, keep awareness in the upper back and extend the arms up overhead. Let's see if you can keep awareness of the muscles in the upper back, extending the arms up overhead. Okay, and then slowly lowering the hands down. Here's where we're gonna work our front leg a little bit bringing the hands down to the front of the mat at your own pace and stepping your left foot back. Let's come into what's called plank. So making your core tight, right? Making your core engaged, engaging your core. You can kind of check out your, your, the, the balls of your feet and coming up onto the balls of the feet. You could have your knees on the mat here or off of the mat. You decide, it's your choice for this. Okay, ready? We're gonna just kind of slowly bend, begin bending our elbows, squeezing the shoulders together as we lower ourselves down to the mat. Keep the elbows in as you come down. Release. Take a moment to relax. All 
And now when you're ready to peel your head up, neck, shoulders, maybe even pressing lightly into your hands. And then lifting your tailbone up, straightening your elbows, curling your toes under your feet. Lifting your knees up. And when you're ready, let's try stepping the right foot forward, dropping the left heel down. We're going to push into the right heel. Feel that as you release your arms to your sides and begin to lift your head up, pushing into your heels. Feel that in that right leg. All the work it's doing to lift us up. Taking notice of the bend in your front knee, the space between your legs, between your feet, the space between your feet. Remember that can always be adjusted to suit your body. What does it mean to suit your body? That's a question to worth exploring, I think. And then interlacing your hands behind your head, pressing your head into your hands. See if you can find some sense of ease here in your body as you breathe in, becoming aware of your body and breathing out and calming your whole body down. Okay, and then releasing the hands up towards the ceiling. Breathing in, becoming aware of your body. Breathing out and calming your body down. Okay, let's begin to slowly lower the hands down to the mat in front of you, pressing it to that front heel. Take your time and then step the right foot back. Come into a plank, hold, engage your core muscles here. Engaging your core muscles. Let's see if you can make your elbows straight for the time being. If you need to lower your knees down, that's perfectly fine. Or you can keep them raised, it's your choice. Okay, now let's slowly lower the, or bend the elbows. Lowering the whole body down slowly. Straightening out the feet, tuck the elbows in. And now we're just kind of peeling up the head, neck and shoulders. Peeling up the head, neck and shoulders, release the hands and stretch them out about shoulder heights like like the wings of an airplane All right feel those muscles in your back once again working to keep your arms lifted off of the ground we're holding for a count of five four three two one and bring your hands back to your sides, rest your head. You can turn your head to one side if you like. Relaxing your whole body. Breathing in, becoming aware of this lying down posture. Breathing out and softening all the muscles throughout your body. All right, this next one, we're gonna work on our low back a little bit. For this one, bring your chin to the mat, your hands to your sides, and we're just gonna rock our legs to one side so that we lift up our abdomen and tuck our arm underneath our abdomen on that one side. And then rolling over our arm and tucking the other arm underneath our abdomen. Adjust your arms underneath your abdomen and if this is really uncomfortable for you, just have your arms at your sides. That's fine too. 
you can uh, kind of dig your elbows into your abdomen just beneath your rib cage if that works for you. It's kind of digging our elbows in, in a little bit, pressing them in. Focusing now on the contact our shoulders are making with the ground, our shoulders, and lifting our right leg up, maybe three or four inches off of the ground, lifting our right leg up. You, you decide how high to lift it, how much space to have between your foot and the floor. Feel those muscles operating in your low back. Holding. Three, two, one, and rest. Lower the right foot down and lift the left leg up. Lift it up as high as you want to lift it. It's up to you. And holding it there, maybe for five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Take a moment to allow your body to rest. If you need to turn your head to one side, go ahead and do that. Okay, and then bringing your chin back to the mat or your forehead. You could do your forehead or your chin. Hands or arms tucked underneath your body. See if you can get your elbows as close to each other as you can. Feel your shoulders on the ground. And now we're gonna lift both legs up together, lifting them up as high as you'd like and holding. Notice the muscles in your low back, in your glutes. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. Release the arms, turn the head to one side and rest. All right, one more. Um, let's um, make our way into child's pose. So coming up onto all fours and then sitting back on our heels, sliding our hands forward and lowering our forehead to the mat, rest. This helps to open up the low back. The tops of the legs are soft. You decide how much space to have between your two knees. You could have your knees moving out beyond your rib cage, or maybe you have your knees closer together. Just kind of resting your upper body, resting your lower back, softening the muscles around your face. Softening the muscles around your shoulders and arms. Taking in some more breaths. Letting your whole body rest. All right, when you're ready, if you have some uh, blocks or something that gives you some height, you may wanna use them at this time. I'm just stacking two bricks on top of each other because that's a height that seems to work for me right now. You could also you know, stack something the height of one brick, but the height is gonna be important here and really pay attention to what works for for your body. I'm facing the opposite way of the of the of the of my bricks and just coming down onto my elbows and draping my upper back 
over that height. All right, so you can bring your elbows, make your, make your body comfortable. So coming into a half seated posture here, and then in your own time, lowering your, your back just above your shoulder blades, lowering your back onto that height and letting, this might be a little strain on the neck, but see if you can, you can also put a cushion or a pillow underneath your head if you need to as you let your chin rise up. So lowering the crown of your head to the floor. All right, if it doesn't go all the way to the floor, that's okay. Again, you can put a pillow underneath your head, but feel that opening in your rib cage. Now, if you want to, you can also extend your arms over your head. See if that is, is something you want to try out. Extending your arms over your head. Just feel how the rib cage just expands here. In the back, just kind of opening up everything here in the respiratory system. So helpful. Right now, especially for all this respiratory stuff and COVID going around. Just taking those full breaths into your lungs. See if you can relax your whole body here. All right, when you're ready, begin to slowly come back to that half seated position really, really slowly, because if you come up too quickly, you might get a head rush. So slowly lifting up your, your head, really using your neck muscles here. I'm gonna continue to raise up, engage your core muscles to help lift you up. Use your hands here to lift you up bringing your feet together and just rounding your back forward, tucking your chin. Now we're stretching the muscles of the back the opposite way. Just tucking our chin in, letting the head just hang. And then coming back up to seated, If you're using blocks or something there, you may want to move them out of the way. And let's go into what's called deep relaxation or yoga nidra. Okay, so one way to do that is by bringing our hands forward and engaging our core muscles, then lowering our back down slowly. One vertebra at a time. Feel those vertebrae touching the mat. Lower the head down, rest your arms at your side. Maybe shake out your, your legs a little bit, roll your, <clears throat> roll your legs, roll your arms, roll your head a little bit side to side. Feel free to close your eyes. Find your breath, take a deep breath in, hold it. Suck in a little bit more air, hold it. Squeeze your legs, squeeze your buttocks, make fists with your hands and arms, lift your arms and head and legs up together, hold, squeeze everything tight and release. This helps to stimulate what's called the relaxation response. Notice now, notice how the body responds. You might notice a wave of relaxation coming over your whole body from head to toe, just allowing all of the muscles there to soften wherever you feel restless, makes creating some space, some sense of ease, a feeling of letting go, releasing the muscle groups throughout the body.
And see if you can sustain that sense of ease over multiple mind moments. Over multiple moments. See if you can sustain that sense of ease. Stay with it. When we can keep our mind connected with the sense of ease in our body, we are learning. We're teaching ourselves. We're learning how to stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system. Disengaging from the reptilian brain, bringing the cognitive functions back online. Take a moment here to bring your awareness, bring your mindfulness to your breathing. Watching your breath as it flows in and out. Like waves on the ocean, rising and falling. Okay, and then as you're ready, let's begin to roll the legs and the arms a little bit. If you wanna stay longer without moving, that's totally fine. Otherwise, feel free, to, feel free to begin to move your body a little bit in ways that wake yourself up, wake up the muscles, wake up the physical body. Maybe rocking your knees side to side. And rolling to one side and then coming up to a seated posture. We're going to start to wake up our body now. We've been doing some a lot of, of resting of our body. So important for keeping healthy is to rest our body. Find the time to consciously rest. Not unconsciously, but consciously be, be aware of the resting. And now we start to stimulate our, stimulate our body and our mind. So let's practice some breathing exercises that help to stimulate our, our, our attention. The first is deep three-part breath. This is just kind of a, a basic pranayam breathing practice, breath expansion. So we're, we are at the end of your exhale, Draw the navel into the spine, press out the remaining air through the nose, and then deep inhale into the abdomen first, then the ribs and the collarbones. And then exhale it out. 
the end of the exhale, press the navel in, press the air out, deep inhale. Continue at your own pace, exhaling fully. Navel in, deep inhale, continue at your own pace. Three more breaths. The end of the next exhale, return your breathing to normal. All right, this next one we're gonna do is called Kapalabhati. And this really, this is a stimulant. It's like the, uh, it's called the yoga cup of coffee. You can be the judge if, if it works like coffee or not, but here it is. We um, bring our hands to our knees and we snap our abdomen in, expelling air through our nose. Looks and sounds like this. And then release the abdomen. Let the air naturally flow back in through the nose. Okay, so it's a forceful snapping of the abdomen in, releasing. So it's a passive inhale. It's a forceful exhale and a passive inhale. Let's try this. We'll do maybe 10 or 15 breaths like this. Ready? Exhale. Inhale, part way. And begin. Exhale fully. Inhale a deep breath. Exhale slowly, easy exhale, returning your breath to normal. All right, let's take a moment just to sit. See if you feel maybe a little bit more energized with that breath. If you have time to sit a little bit longer, please feel free to. Let's uh, end our class with uh, three ohms, just as we started. And you're welcome to bring to, bring to attention, bring to your, your awareness, anybody you'd like to send your well wishes out to, your prayers, your loving kindness, somebody that you really care about deeply, that you want to be well, and you wanna send your kindness, your love, your compassion out to them through the sound of your voice. Okay, so bring that person or people into your mind, into your attention. Somebody that's easy for you to love, not somebody that's too difficult. Somebody that's fairly easy to love, Let's take a deep breath in for our first home. Oh. Deep breath in, higher octave. down, take a deep breath in. Oh. And I wanna thank you each for practicing with us, coming together to practice, taking the time out of your day to work on your own body and mind so that hopefully we may be of better service to humanity.
remember how much of a pleasure, a joy it is to have friends come from afar. It's been good to be with you. Me.